Yo, again, yo, everyone, Star the Protagonist is here, bringing you all another Dragon Ball video. The upcoming fourth entry of the Sparkin slash Budokai Tenkaichi series is coming very soon on the 11th of October this year. And after seeing all the trailers, this looks to be a very promising Dragon Ball game, especially considering how much I love Budokai Tenkaichi 3, and that game came out nearly 17 years ago. However, I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't worried about Sparkin Zero. And here's why. Starting off the bat was the release date. It was rumored to be released on the 1st of October this year. I was a bit skeptical on the release date because I assumed that it would be released around early 2025. However, Bandai Namco confirmed that it would be released on October 11th this year. While the game does look polished and the colors look amazing, I'm a bit cautious when it comes to big budget games like Sparkin Zero. I didn't have that, that same energy with Sonic Frontiers because I knew it would be a big step to Sonic Forces. And I was right. The game not only performed well, but it also sold very well. However, I do think that Sega should have given Sonic Team a bit more time on the game. I understand that this was to celebrate the 30th anniversary though, so I won't get much into that. But when it comes to Sparking Zero, I expected this game to be at least early 2025. And people may say that the devs at Spike Chunsoft has been working on the game for over 5 years, when that's really not a good excuse. Just because a game has had over 5 plus years of development doesn't mean that the final product is going to be good automatically. The game could be packaged with bugs and glitches down the line. Now that's not to say that Spark and Zero will have glitches, but adding local multiplayer at the last minute? Look, I'm all for local multiplayer, but this is another reason why they should have let just delayed the game or at the very least not include the mode as well. It's literally the same as Xenoverse 1. You can only pick the hyperbolic time chamber and you have to take turns to choose your character. I admired the fact that they added local multiplayer and I understand why they didn't want to add it. But again, they should have just delayed it to early 2025 to work on locals a bit more. Hopefully down the line, they'll add major updates to it. I know a lot of people waited years for a fourth entry in the Sparkin series, myself included. But as the old saying goes, good things come to those who wait. Now, as much as I don't fully agree on the release date, that's nothing compared to the obnoxious price tag. I'll never understand how anyone is okay with spending $70 on a video game. And yes, that is a thing right now ever since the PS5 and Series X S came out. If you buy the standard edition, that's $70 out of your pocket. And as a hardcore Dragon Ball fan, I ain't paying that kind of money for it. And it sucks that they would charge this amount. But I'm not surprised considering that it's from Bandai Namco. Granted, you do get early access to all of the forms of Gogeta and Broly. So that's something, right? But that doesn't stop there because this game also has a season pass. This is where you'll get access to 20 plus extra characters from Dragon Ball Super Superhero and Dragon Ball Daima. You'll also be able to summon Shenron as well and you get to play the game 3 days earlier, which is a nice touch. Now DLC and video games have been a common tradition since the PS3 and 360 era and Dragon Ball Raging Blast had free DLC. And then we get to Battle of Z. You only had two DLC characters to buy for only $4 a pop. And no, Goku in the Naruto Sage outfit does not count as DLC. He is a day one character. So if you bought the game day one, you will automatically get that character. So yeah, he was an exclusive character for the day one buyers. But then we get to Xenoverse the era. Now, I can cut Xenoverse 1 a lot of slack because that game has only three payable DLC packs. But Xenoverse 2 does not know when to stop because that game has up to 16 DLC packs. Now, there is a complete version for the PS5 and Series X slash S, but Jesus Christ, that game is just bloated with DLC. I feel sorry for those who have to spend over $200 to get everything, only to see Bandai Namco release a cheaper version that gives you almost everything. It's like the more of a fan you are, the more punished you'll get. Now you can say the same thing for Fighter Z and its DLC, but one, that game only has three season passes, and two, all of it only equals up to 20 plus characters to buy. By the way, the ultimate edition for Spark and Zero is $110. 
I can understand if it was $90, but $110 is just too much. And the same can be said for the Collector's Edition because it's over double the amount for the Ultimate Edition. And I have to ask, why? Sure, you can get all the cool stuff that's packaged with the game, but $230? Now look, if you're someone who can afford any of these editions, then go nuts. It's your money anyway. But there are a lot of Dragon Ball fans out there who are probably struggling right now. However, what I'm also worried about is what they'll do when the game is launched. It's no surprise that some of their latest Dragon Ball games have had microtransactions, where you use real money in order to buy in-game currency to get cosmetics. Now, I don't have a problem with microtransactions as long as one, the game is free, and two, the cosmetics do not give an advantage. And games like Fortnite do that very well. Not only is it free to play, but the cosmetics are completely optional. However, I do have an issue with these companies adding microtransactions to games that you had to pay for. And Xenoverse 2, Kakarot, and The Breakers are the biggest examples of that. Bandai Namco is a pretty greedy company, we're not gonna deny that. And I wouldn't be surprised if they do the same thing for Sparking Zero. Now I am hoping that I'm wrong, but with how they've been pricing these additions, and with how they've been adding microtransactions to the other, all the other Dragon Ball games, I'm allowed to be skeptical. Another thing that I'm very worried about is the character roster. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is set to have up to 164 characters in the base game, which is one character higher than Budokai Tenkaichi 3's roster, which was 163 characters. And as someone who played the first three, I'm just happy we get to fully experience the Dragon Ball Super story and not just do the Dragon Ball Z story for the 100th time. However, as I kept track of all of the character reveals, all we've been seeing are characters from Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Super. So it led to me asking, are we really gonna see any characters from the original Dragon Ball show and Dragon Ball GT? We have not seen a single character from any of these two shows in the franchise. And it led to me, as well as other fans, getting extremely worried. Say what you want about Dragon Ball GT, but that show has a bunch of amazing characters and it introduced us to Super Saiyan 4. And the original Dragon Ball series was the one that kickstarted this whole franchise. Now, a lot of Dragon Ball games didn't include any characters from those two shows, which is like, yeah, but the Sparking slash Budokai Zenkaichi series it's been a tradition to have characters from all the Dragon Ball anime in the games. So it's really worrying to not see GT Goku or even Kid Goku in the game. We're over a month away from this game getting released and we have never seen a single character from Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball GT. And if the next season pass actually has any characters from Dragon Ball and GT, that'll be bittersweet. I would have loved to see Kid Goku and GT Goku as well as other characters in the base roster instead of just them being DLC. Even characters from the movies as well. I can see what Bandai Namco is trying to do. They're trying to make this game last for a long time, which I think is a good thing, but it's the execution of, of it that I'm mostly worried about. Not to make this into me venting, but I feel like we're straying away to what really make video games fun and affordable. Gone are the days where we just buy the game and enjoy what we got with DEOC later down the line. Now we're seeing games either getting overly priced, being live service, or being bloated with DLCs, special editions, and or microtransactions. And I fear that Spark and Zero could suffer the same fate as Naruto Storm Connections, because not only was that game an inferior version of Storm 4, but it was completely bloated with so many additions. Bandai Namco had it right with fighters. Yes, while that game has, has a lot of DLC characters, at least it felt more affordable. And again, I'm not here to rain on all the fun. This game looks very promising as it's a sequel to a beloved 17 year old game. And I know a lot of people as well as content creators are hyped for this game. Even my younger cousin because he is planning on getting the game day one. So I'm not here to be the fun police, but I wish people would just learn from what went down with Storm Connections and think with their wallets. There's nothing wrong with waiting for a price drop or a sale, especially to those who are struggling. The only reason I got almost all of the DLC for Xenoverse 2 is because I got them on sale. Same thing with Dragon Ball Fighters. 
I got that game for 10 bucks on sale back in late 2019, as well as the DLC. And hey, maybe you want to get Spark and Zero as ASAP as possible for content, and that's totally fine. If you're a massive Dragon Ball fan and have the money to afford the game, as well as the stuff that comes with it, then go for it. As for everyone else, all we can do is wait for a price drop or just get the game on Christmas Day, or at least wait for it to be on sale. Personally, I'm more worried about getting the PS5 first, and maybe when the game price drops down, I'll be sure to get the game for myself. I want to see this game succeed, but at the same time, I gotta address some of the issues that this game could face in the future. It's incredibly sad to see people dismiss the criticism that others have given from the last minute local multiplayer, to the character roster, to the awful character select screen, as well as the outrageous price tags on these additions. These are legitimate criticisms that people have, yet somehow saying all of this makes you a hater, which I highly disagree on that. Yes, it's completely fine to be excited about the game, but it is also important to voice out any legitimate criticism you have about the game. That way, the, de the developers can see this and can actually learn to improve on what they already have. However, I will admit there are some people who just straight up hating the game. I don't know if you ever heard of this guy named Perfection the Natural Selection, but he's heavily hated in the Dragon Ball community, and rightfully so. Like, I, I want you all to understand this. How can you hate a an upcoming game and refuse to buy it, but want to milk the absolute hell out of it? I'm not kidding when I say this. He has made over 50 videos either talking about or hating on the game that hasn't even come out yet. You did not need to make that many videos, okay? But I'm not gonna waste my time on him, so I'll just end the video with this. As I said before, you can do whatever you want, it's your money, I'm not gonna stop you from buying the game, and hopefully you'll have a good time with Spark and Zero. But that's just gonna be it for me. Uh, thank you all for watching, and let me know what your thoughts on this, but try to keep it civil. Also, I want to give a shout out to the YouTuber named Hidden, since her video on Spark and Zero's price tags and season pass inspired me to make this video. So be sure to check out her content, she makes amazing Dragon Ball content. Now I will be playing Spark and Zero when my cousin gets the game, so when that time comes, I'll probably make a tier list to see where it ranks. But until then, this is Star the Protagonist signing out. As always, Goki Genyo, and have a star-tastic day, everyone. If you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn those notifications on to join the Star Nation. Also, be sure to follow my Twitter, and while you're at it, check out my previous video. Now.